Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture 56. Uh, so, we have been discussing about the general theory of orbit perturbation. So, we will continue with that. Uh, but today, if, uh, before we start uh, working with the evaluation of the Langrange bracket, so before that, we will review the concepts we have been discussing uh, in the previous few lectures. So, uh, what we have done that uh, orbit. this uh, moment of a uh, body uh, heavenly body about another heavenly body in the relative terms we have written it like this mu by r q r and this also we have written in terms of minus del q. Now, uh, the solution to this problem mu by r q r equal to 0. So, because this is this consists of 3 vector second order or 3 scalar 3 scalar this is a vector equation. So, 3 scalar second order differential equation. So, total 6 constants are involved in this. And already we have identified those constants a e then uh, i small omega and capital omega. The another constant see uh, we will make little difference here that we if we are given x y z and x dot y dot z dot is at any instant of time say at t 0 which we indicate here by putting the subscript 0. So, uh, corresponding orbital parameters it is a a e i small omega capital omega and theta 0 whatever the theta value at this is the corresponding orbital parameters, but here in this case once we are telling that there are 6 constants involved. So, the last constant will identify with what we write as sigma okay. where from where it is appearing. So, if you look into the uh, Euler equation we have uh, this uh, Kepler's equation we have written. So, we solve this equation and while integrating. So, we got it in the form m equal to n t minus t equal to e minus e sin e, where e is the eccentric anomaly, this is the mean anomaly and the quantity here n t minus this quantity we can write as n t plus sigma, where sigma equal to minus n t and t is called the time of perigee passage. So, rather than taking this theta as uh, because to see the once you convert it into the uh, orbital parameters. So, you, you can see that the theta is varying with time. Okay. If you take it for a particular instant then it is ok, but if you take it for uh, uh, as a general variable. So, uh, theta is varying with time. Okay. You are taking not as a particular instant of time, but in a general manner you are writing. So, theta will keep varying with time. So, this will not appear as a constant. So, rather than taking that sigma which is written as sigma equal to minus n t. So, this is taken as a constant. So, either minus n t or either t. So, either of them can be chosen as the uh, constant uh, of integration. 
sometimes instead of t or minus n t uh, also it is a is usual to use m at a particular instant of time which is a mean anomaly at a particular instant of time. So, uh, now if we look back and the equation we derived for the conic section E cos say uh, this was something like uh, phi minus beta which we wrote as L 1 plus E cos theta where theta we have written as the true anomaly. this is x y z the inertial frame and then we have the orbit here this point was in n prime and perigee position is lying somewhere here ok. So, this angle we have written as omega. So, what appears here in this place? So, actually what we have written here theta. So, it is a uh, we are getting theta as phi minus beta. So, phi is being measured from certain reference. So, say the phi if we measure from this reference, if we measure phi here in this direction, ok. Let us say this is phi ok and then beta will become this angle from here to here. So, here in this case whatever the beta is appearing it is nothing but your small omega which is the argument of perigee, argument of perigee. But the argument of perigee we have derived in some other way, but the, uh, the fact is that the beta appearing here it was nothing but the argument of perigee. It is being referred to certain reference line. So, phi is being referred to the line uh, n o n prime o n. Okay, and then beta is to this place. So, therefore, this angle is your theta which is shown here in this place. Okay. So, as a whole we hear uh, how many uh, parameters we are involved in this A and E involved in the L both L uh, A and E are involved here also E is there another parameter beta. So, in this equation itself you have three parameters involved which are a, e and a small omega, but we wrote it in a way that it was not visible ok. Now, it becomes uh, more purposeful to discuss all these things. Uh, so, here uh, of course, we have derived omega in some other way uh, we, which we got in the terms of x, y, z, x dot y dot z dot etcetera. Uh, so, if, uh, x, y, z and then we had also this capital omega and in terms of i we have got it. Now, the time of perigee passes means at this point this uh, how much time it is taken to this place this we write as t. Sometimes uh, it is also written as instead of writing this this is also written as tau. Okay. So, uh, either of them can be used. So, time of perigee passes and from there then uh, if the time taken to uh, let me use another color time taken to this place to this place this we write as t ok. So, you can see that from here to here then this time is t minus capital T. So, t minus capital T this is directly related to your mean anomaly by this equation. So, what we have been discussing here that uh, instead of using theta because this is not appearing as a constant rather it is a varying with time. So, we use this sigma equal to minus n t as the constant of the orbit ok. And these 6 constants they are nothing but the constant of integration in this equation or either here in uh, this equation. So, uh, this term uh, so this part is important here uh, considering this sigma 
because once we are considering the orbit perturbation, so immediately we can see that in the, the case of the orbit perturbation, if this is the oscillating orbit and the true orbit is going like this. So, if the disturbance is not present, your satellite may be here, but if disturbance is present, your satellite may be located here in this place or either uh, say if, uh, your satellite is here and we move it little bit from this place. So, this is the delta r perturbation produced because of your the term we have written r double dot equal to minus del u plus r. So, this was the perturbation potential. So, because of this, this is the perturbation produced in the orbit. Otherwise, it would have followed the osculating uh, orbit, which in this case it becomes a Keplerian orbit if the disturbance is not present. Okay. So, if the disturbance is present, so this node also this will rotate. Okay. Here in this case, you can see that what we have written here the this uh, time of perigee passes we have indicated by here t, this position this t will also change. Okay. Omega and t they are not the same thing remember omega and t they are not the same thing. This is the time taken from this place to this place from the reference to this place which we are calling as the time of perigee passes. And this is the here this part is the angle omega. So, this angle and uh, if you multiply this t by the mean anomaly uh, which is we are writing as n. So, this does not give you this omega. Okay. So, we have to be careful about this because the uh, angular velocity is changing over uh, only over a uh, whole uh, one period of time. So, from where in the Keplerian orbit from where wherever it is starting it will get back to the same place. Now, p, once the theta is varying, so whatever the angle here indicated this omega angle, it will not be covered in the same time. If you multiply it with the mean anomaly, then what I mean that if you multiply mean uh, angular rate with the time of perigee passage, you are not going to get this. Otherwise, there is no meaning to writing this uh, A E i small omega and t, t or either sigma what we are using here and capital omega. See if both are the same, so there is no meaning to writing that, that these are the two different constants. Okay. So, this part you should remember and perhaps uh, I have not discussed uh, this till now, but this is the right time to uh, get into this and I have described this, uh, this is exactly what the uh, things are taking place. So, this t will also vary if the perturbation term this r is present. Okay, now, we can start with the evaluation of the Langrange bracket uh, what I have written here. So, earlier as I have told you that uh, we will divide it into um, the total all the elements A, E, I, uh, small omega, capital omega and sigma. Instead of sig, uh, minus n t, we are writing this as the sigma. Okay. So, this can be divided into three parts and we can write it as A, E, A is sigma and I a small omega and capital omega. So, these two groups we uh, divide it and this also we have discussed earlier this I will indicate by alpha r and this by beta s. So, uh, number of the Langrange brackets already we have discussed that uh, out of total 36 because this forms a Langrange bracket element. Uh, they form 
6 into 6 matrix. So, out of that the diagonal one is 0 and thereafter here we have total of 9 in this place we get total of 3 in this place we get total of 3 and here just a, a with a opposite sign. Okay. Here also on this side as we have discussed we will get 3. So, on the left side of the diagonal here it will be a minus of this similarly here in this place whatever the sign it comes with on this side this will be negative or otherwise. So, if, uh, if then we divided it into two parts. So, one part this part will refer to from here to here this part is corresponding to A E sigma and this part is corresponding to I small omega and capital omega. So, you can see that Langrange bracket then it can be written as A A which of course, is 0 uh, according to the property of the Langrange bracket we have written similarly A E. So, these are just referring to your alpha r and alpha s or uh, alpha r alpha s okay. where alpha uh, r varies over 1, 2, 3 and s also is 1, 2, 3. While the mixture one this one where I have shown this 9, so that corresponds to terms like a i etcetera. So, you can see here immediately if I write here a e sigma and here i small omega capital omega a e sigma i small omega capital omega. So, here corresponding elements are like this in this place similarly for related to this you will get a i then a omega and then a sigma the terms will appear like this. So, total of 3 plus 3 and plus here we are getting total uh, uh, in this place 3 into 3 9. So, 9 plus 3 uh, 12 uh, plus 3 total 15. Okay. Because of the skew symmetry here the another thing that you should notice that here uh, the matrix formed by this skew symmetric matrix okay this is non singular okay so this matrix formed by langrange bracket ci comma cj this is non singular non singular means its a determinant is not zero although this is skew symmetry this is because this is of even order even order okay so even order skew symmetric matrix skew symmetric matrix let us say non singular while odd order skew symmetric matrix will be singular. That means, if I have a 3 into 3 skew symmetric matrix. So, this is bound to be similar Mat means if this is matrix A and it is a skew symmetric. So, determinant of this will be 0. So, we have to evaluate our purpose is to evaluate the Langrange bracket. So, using the first two properties that is uh, like the A this bracket will be 0 okay. and uh, also uh, A T or A sigma this will be equal to minus T A. So, this was a second property okay. we have already written this okay. and the third property that we have written it was dou y dou t C i comma C j this equal to 0. That means, the Langrange bracket of the if we are taking the time derivative of the Langrange bracket. Uh, so, this quantity is going to be 0 and this we have proved earlier. So, uh, let me just uh, rewrite those uh, data statement. So, uh, this we have written as
is just Langrange bracket is just dependent on on the osculating arrangements and not on its derivatives which are constant. So, if we use this property that the osculating this Langrange bracket is independent of this time. So, therefore, uh, we can utilize it to uh, find the um, evaluate the Langrange bracket say if, um, what I mean here in this place that if this quantity is independent of time. So, that means, it is a derivative either you that means, this Langrange bracket you either evaluate at this point or either at this point or this point this point of the osculating orbit it is going to be the same because it is a independent of time it is not depending on time. Okay. That means, I can also evaluate at the this perigee location and this property we are going to use next to evaluate the Langrange bracket co corresponding to here alpha r alpha s. Okay, so, with this we have So, this is our osculating ellipse and uh, we draw the axis here, this is xi and eta, this is the focus okay. and this is our auxiliary circle. If this point this is r so and this angle is theta. So, xi we can write as r cos theta and eta as r sin theta the x and y component in the plane of the orbit. And from here the orbit will get perturbed okay. and already the various relations we have derived in the case of the uh, while we were discussing the Mm, mm, this uh, Kepler's equation. So, at that time we have derived all the relations. So, I am not going to again write it here and simply I will write the result this is a times cos e minus e and this is a times 1 minus e a square times sin e. So, with these two basic equations and in the Langrange vector while we are looking for. So, there we have to the alpha r alpha s this we have to evaluate and there what we have looked into that this will be do a iota by do xi by do alpha r and do xi by do alpha s do alpha r and So, we need to evaluate these Langrange brackets. Yeah. This, this is the Langrange bracket and we have expanded it. So, we need to uh, evaluate these determinants or the Jacobian. Okay. Now, uh, for evaluating each of them and where we are going to use, we are going to use this in finding out the quantities like A e, A t etcetera.
and also we have m equal to n times t minus t which can be also written as n t plus sigma as we have written earlier. So, this is our third equation and n equal to mu by a cube under root or n square equal to mu by a cube. So, these are some of the information we can use to solve this problem. So, do by do t c j c k or c i c j whatever the term we have used. Okay. So, this quantity we have written perhaps in terms of c j and c k. So, we will continue with writing this. This quantity is going to 0 and what does this mean? This implies that c j c k is constant for all values of t and hence can be evaluated at any point in the oscillating orbit. Therefore, for convenience, we opt to evaluate the bracket, Langrange bracket at the perigee. So, for this evaluation we about the perigee point we consider an infinitesimal value of e. So, for an infinitesimal value of e we consider this. So, what does this mean that uh, say here we want to evaluate at perigee. So, we just take a nearby location which is infinitesimally close to this and expand our equation which are given there. So, e minus e sin e this equal to m and so if we expand it this can be simply written as e minus e sin e equal to m equal to n t minus t and therefore, from this place e can be written as t minus t divided by 1 minus e. Okay, this is just the whole process. Okay, we, we are trying to evaluate at this point. So, we take a nearby point expand it. So, basically we have linearized it and then try to evaluate the Langrange bracket at this point. Now, if, uh, so the cos E we can write as 1 minus sin A square E cos A square E equal to and this becomes then 1 minus E A square. This is approximately because sin E for a small value of E this will be equal to E and therefore, cos E will be equal to 1 minus E A square to the power 1 by 2 which we can approximately write as 1 minus 1 by 2 e a square using binomial expansion. Okay. 
Okay, so if we utilize this information uh, in our uh, work, so if, uh, this the equation for the jive we have written, so that becomes a times cos e minus e. So the cos e is then one minus one by two e a square minus e, which we can write as. So, I will work one or two Langrange bracket, all of them it is not possible to do here in this lecture, because it is a uh, every one is very time taking and obviously, I am not going to uh, derive all the equations. Uh, for that, I will give you some supplementary material, which can be used for uh, looking into those derivations. I will after covering the basics, I will be writing the results and the derivation of those, those results you will find in the supplementary material provided. Okay. Similarly, the eta then becomes this is uh, equal to this is r cos theta r sin theta this equal to a times 1 minus e a square times sin e we have written. So, sin e equal to e. So, this becomes a e minus 1 minus e a square. So, eta then can be written as E already we have written, E we have written here somewhere. Uh, in this place. So, you will use this equation to uh, an insert here in this place. So, eta becomes then eta we can write as this was n t minus t divided by 1 minus c. A times 1 minus e times 1 plus e and t minus t divided by Okay, similarly, this xi, uh, this can also be written in terms of n and t. Now, this will become a 1 minus c e and minus 1 by 2 n a square t minus t a square divided by 1 minus e square. And now, we are ready to uh, derive this eta dot and xi dot. So, first we work the xi dot term, xi dot will be a times if we differentiate this. So, this quantity we are going to get this as now n square term is there. So, n square already we have written as mu by a cube. So, once we differentiate, so this gives us a is there and then minus n a square divided by 2 times 2 t minus t divided by 1 minus e a square. So, minus a n a square a 2 2 cancels out t minus t divided by 1 minus e a square. Similarly, the eta dot we can write as n a times 1 plus e by 1 minus e.
Okay, so this way we have got uh, these terms. Now we need to evaluate the terms appearing in the uh, Lagrange bracket. So there we have the the first determinant by dou xi by let us say that we are looking for alpha r alpha s. So, alpha r we replace by a and alpha s we replace by e okay. and then what will be the value of this Lagrange bracket this is what we are looking for that means we have written alpha r equal to a and alpha s equal to e. So, we need to uh, replace this Mm, alpha r by a and alpha s by e. So, here then the derivative becomes dou xi by dou a dou xi by dou e and then dou xi dot by dou a and dou xi dot by dou e this we need to evaluate and the other bracket. So, this quantity dou eta by dou a dou eta by dou e dou xi dot by dou a and dou xi dot by uh, so sorry this is eta eta dot by dou e this is the quantity we have to find out. So, each of them then we need to evaluate. So, dou xi by dou a now xi equation already we have written. So, directly from there A is appearing. So, immediately we can see this can be written as 1 by 2 n square t minus t whole square divided by 1 minus e square. This is the first term the A was appearing here in this place uh, this place. So, this we have differentiated next n is also a function of A. So, therefore, uh, we need to differentiate that too. Okay, so, the next term will be a times 0 plus 1 by 2 3 n a square t minus t whole a square and divided by a times 1 minus a square. that means this is dou by dou a mu we can take it outside a to the power minus 3 and this will turn out to be mu uh, times a to the minus 3 mu times a to the power minus 4 and this is nothing but then you can write as minus 3 n a square divided by a because mu by a q is n a square. So, uh, this is the thing we have used here in this place and this can be reduced finally to 1 minus e minus n a square t minus t whole a square divided by 1 minus c a square. 1 minus e whole square and then plus 3 n square divided by 2 t minus t whole square and 1 minus e square. So, this minus sign which was appearing here that got plus and a is appearing here. So, this a this a will cancel out. So, this is what we get and if we try to evaluate at the perigee that means, we are evaluating at uh, the point where t equal to capital T. So, at that point we get this as 1 minus e. This quantity will be 0, this quantity will be 0. So, we will get this as 1 minus e. Okay, so, uh, so, basically this term we write as dou xi by dou a to be evaluated at t equal to 1 minus. Okay. So, this way we have to evaluate all the terms. Okay. So, 
Similarly, we have dou uh, xi dot by dou a, this equal to 2 mu as we have written here uh, dou xi dot, xi dot is here. So, once we differentiate this quantity, xi dot e is there and uh, n square is also present. <coughs> so, differentiating this, uh, let me copy it here in this place n square minus n square a. Okay, uh, maybe uh, this time is over, otherwise lecture will get longer. So, we will continue this in the next lecture. Thank you very much.